If you are anything like me, always checking out the latest awards as it is, you might have noticed this website with a standout text over animation. The first time I saw it, I was blown away by the effect, but I had no idea how to create it myself. I knew shaders were probably involved, but that was about it. Fast forward to now, now that I have started to explore shaders, with whatever resources I could find, I have finally discovered a way to recreate a somewhat similar version of this animation. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to build this text over effect using shaders and 3JS. Now researching these topics and creating content like this takes a lot of time, but it's worth it to bring you something unique. So if you find this video helpful, please consider giving a like and subscribing as it really helps support the channel. Also, if you'd like to access the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. In the HTML, we don't need much since we'll be rendering the text using 3JS. All we need is a simple text container, so let's add that. Now, let's set up some basic styles for the body and canvas. First, I'm importing the font which we'll be using throughout the project. For the body and HTML, I'm setting the margin and padding to zero and making sure the width and height cover the full viewport. I've also hidden any overflow and set the background to white while applying that font to the entire document. Next, I'm styling the text container by setting it to be absolutely positioned, covering the entire viewport with overflow hidden. This ensures our text stays within the boundaries and scales correctly. Finally, the canvas element is centered both horizontally and vertically using absolute positioning and transform. I've also set it to cover the entire viewport, making sure our animation takes up the full screen. Before we dive into the JavaScript code, make sure you have added the 3JS CDN to your project, as we'll be using it extensively to build this animation. Now let's get started with the initial setup in our JavaScript. First, we need to grab a reference to the text container div that we added in the HTML. This will be the main container where all our WebGL content will be rendered. Next, we define a variable called easeFactor and set it to 0.02. This value will control how smoothly the animation reacts to the mouse movement. We then declare a few variables, scene, camera, renderer, and plane mesh. These will be used to set up our 3JS environment. To track the mouse movement and create the hover effect, we initialize three variables, mouse position, target mouse position, and previous position. These objects will store the X and Y coordinates of the mouse at different stages. Current position, the target position, where we want the animation to move, and the previous position to create a directional effect. You'll notice that we have initialized mouse position, target mouse position, and previous position with X and Y values set to 0.5. The reason for this is that it positions the mouse coordinates at the center of the screen, which is where we want our animation to be focused initially. Now that we have set up the basics, let's move on to the shaders, which are essential for creating our text hover effect. If you are new to shaders, shaders are small programs that run on the GPU, handling how vertices and pixels are processed to create visuals. In simple terms, they define how things look on the screen, from textures to lightning effects. For this project, we are using two types of shaders, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. First, let's look at the vertex shader. The vertex shader processes the vertices of the shape we are rendering. Next, we have the fragment shader. The fragment shader is where the magic happens. This shader handles the pixel by pixel manipulation of the texture, creating the hover effect. We use it to calculate how the texture should be distorted based on the mouse's position. We do this by defining how each pixel relates to the mouse movement, adjusting the texture coordinates accordingly. If you are curious about shaders and want to explore more, you can find plenty of these shaders online. I'll drop some resources in the description. Next, let's create the text texture that we'll be using in our animation. For this, we'll write a separate function. This function will take up few parameters like the text itself, the font, size, color, and an optional font weight. First, we create a canvas element dynamically. This canvas is where we'll draw the text that will eventually be turned into a texture. We then get the 2D rendering context from the canvas, which gives us access to various drawing functions. To ensure our text looks sharp on high resolution displays, we set the canvas width and height to the twice the size of the window's width and height. This way, even when scaled, the text remains crisp. Next, 
we fill the entire canvas with a background color which defaults to white if no color is specified. We then define the font size. If a specific size isn't provided, we calculate it based on the canvas width to ensure the text scales appropriately with the canvas. With the font size set, we define the text style. We also center the text both horizontally and vertically by setting text align to center and text baseline to middle. This ensures the text is perfectly positioned in the middle of the canvas. To make sure the text looks smooth, especially when scaling, we enable image smoothing and set its quality to high. This reduces any jagged edges or pixelation. Next, we measure the width of the text and calculate a scale factor to fit the text within the canvas. We also apply an aspect correction to ensure the text doesn't get distorted when the canvas is resized. Next, to make the text stand out, we draw it with a stroke effect first. using a loop to apply multiple strokes for a more pronounced look. After that, we fill the text with the desired color. Finally, we return the canvas as a texture using canvas texture function. This texture will be used by 3JS to render our text within the WebGL context, allowing us to apply shaders and other effects. This function is essential for generating the visual content that will be animated on the screen, turning the simple text into dynamic and interactive element. Now that we have our text texture ready, it's time to set up the scene where everything will come together. We'll do this in a function called initialize scene. First, we create a new 3JS scene. The scene acts as a container for all 3D objects, lights, and cameras we'll be using. Next, we set up the camera. For this project, we are using an orthopedic camera which is ideal for 2D-like rendering because it maintains the same size and shape regardless of the object's distance from the camera. We then calculate the aspect ratio based on the window's width and height, ensuring the camera scales correctly. The camera is then configured to view the scene from a position where the entire canvas is visible using settings that keep the text centered and in view. After setting up the camera, we move on to creating the shader material. We start by defining shader uniforms, which are the variables that our shaders will use. These include the current and previous mouse positions and of course, the texture we just created. These uniforms will be passed into the shaders to control the animation and appearance of the text. Next, we create a plane mesh using plane geometry and our shader material. The plane geometry is a simple 2D rectangle that will act as a canvas for our shaders. By applying the shader material, we can render our animated text directly onto this plane. With the plane mesh ready, we add it to the scene. Now we need a renderer to display our scene. For that, we use WebGL renderer with anti-aliasing enabled to smooth out any jagged edges. We also set a clear color of white for the background so the text stands out. We set render size to match the window's dimensions and adjust the pixel ratio to match the device's capabilities. This ensures the animation looks sharp on all screens. Finally, we append the renderer's DOM element to our text container which we set up earlier in the HTML. This step integrates the WebGL content into our web page, making the animation visible on the screen. By the end of this function, we have a fully initialized scene with a camera, shader-driven text, and a renderer ready to bring our animation to life. Now that our scene is set up, let's move on to reloading the texture and getting the animation running. First, we create the reload texture function 
This function updates the texture used by our shader. We simply call create text texture again with the same parameters to generate a new texture. Then we update the texture uniform in our shader material with this new texture. This is handy if you want to dynamically change the text or its appearance. Next, we initialize the scene with our initial texture using initialize scene function. Now let's dive into the animation with the animate scene function. We call request animation frame function to create a continuous animation loop. Inside the loop, we update the mouse position, gradually moving it towards the target position to create a smooth easing effect. Then we update the shader uniforms with the current and previous mouse positions which is crucial for calculating the distortion effect. Finally, we render the scene using the render function. This draws everything on the screen, bringing our text to life. Now let's make our animation interactive by handling mouse events. We'll set up event listeners to track mouse movement when the mouse enters the text area or it leaves. First, we add three event listeners to the text container. The mouse move event will track the mouse movement, mouse enter will detect when the mouse enters the container and mouse leave will know when the mouse leaves. The handle mouse move function runs every time the mouse moves within the container. We increase the ease factor to make the animation respond more quickly to the mouse. We then calculate the mouse position relative to the container and update the target position so the animation knows where to move next. When the mouse enters the container, the handle mouse enter function resets the ease factor to a slower value for a smoother start. It also updates both the current and target positions to match where the mouse is, ensuring a seamless transition. Finally, using handle mouse leave function, when the mouse leaves the container, we reset the ease factor and return to the target position to where it was last, making the animation slowly ease back to the previous state. To make sure our animation looks great on any screen size, we need to handle window resizing. For this, we add resize event listener to the window. Whenever the window is resized, the on window resize function is triggered. Here is what happens. First, we recalculate the aspect ratio based on the new window dimensions. This ensures that our camera's view adapts the new size. Then, we adjust the camera's boundaries using the aspect ratio so the entire scene remains in view without any distortion. We also update the camera's projection matrix to apply these changes. Next, we resize the renderer to match the new window size. This step is crucial for maintaining the visual quality of our animation across different screen sizes. Finally, we call the reload texture function to ensure the texture scales correctly with the new dimensions. By handling the resize event, we ensure that our animation remains consistent and responsive no matter how the user resizes their browser window. And that's a wrap. We have just built a dynamic text over animation using shaders and 3JS. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. See you in the next one.